The topic of this video is graphing a quadratic function using its vertex, axis, and intercepts. Let's look at a problem. For the quadratic function f of x equals x squared plus 22x, find the intercepts, vertex, create the graph, the domain and range, and the intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant. Okay, let's begin with the intercepts. Intercepts come in two flavors, x-intercept and y-intercept. The most important property of an x-intercept is that y is equal to zero. The most important property of a y-intercept is that x is equal to zero. So when you're looking to find intercepts, set one variable equal to zero and solve for the value of the other. And remember that when we're dealing with functions, f of x is the same thing as y. So let's look for x-intercepts. We replace y with zero. So we replace this f of x with zero and we get zero equals x squared plus 22x. This is a quadratic equation. We can solve it in multiple ways, but the easiest way is factoring followed by the zero product property. The GCF, the greatest common factor of this binomial is x. And when we take out the x, we're left with x plus 22. By the zero product property, when two things multiply to make zero, then either the first thing is zero or the second thing is zero or both. So we set them both equal to zero. This gives me my first solution, x equals zero. And if we move the plus 22 to the other side and make it negative, we get the second solution. Now remember, these are intercepts, points, ordered pairs. For each x, there's a y. So this is the point zero comma zero, and this is the point negative 22 comma zero. x is negative 22 f of x or y is zero. All right, we now move on to the y-intercept. With a y-intercept, we're setting x equal to zero in our equation. And so we get y equals zero squared plus 22 times zero. y equals zero plus zero, y equals zero. Again, this is an ordered pair. x is zero, y is zero. So we get the point zero, zero. Notice that 0, 0 shows up in both lists. That's because the origin is both an x-intercept and a y-intercept at the same time. Okay, next thing we're going to look for is vertex. There's a formula for the vertex, and that formula is opposite b over 2a for the x-coordinate, and c minus b squared over 4a for the y-coordinate. Or if you prefer, you could ignore this formula completely for the y-coordinate, find x using the x-coordinate portion of the formula, plug into your equation to find y. It's your choice. Either way is fine. Sometimes one way is better, sometimes the other. All right, for our particular problem, we need to identify the coefficients a, b, and c. And we look up here at our function definition, which is x squared plus 22x. Now. This x squared doesn't have a number written, but there is a hidden, understood one as the coefficient. And even though there is no constant term here, there's a hidden, understood, plus zero. And from this, we learn that a equals one, b equals positive 22, c equals zero. Once you know the values of a, b, and c, you can plug them into your formula, and that will give you your vertex. So we have negative 22 over 2 times 1, comma, 0 subtract 22 squared over 4 times 1. Now there's a little rhyme I would like to teach you right now. Whenever you're working with the c minus b squared over 4a formula, my advice is to always do the fraction before the subtraction. Completely ignore this symbol until you have a single value for your simplified fraction. All right, so over here we've got negative 22 divided by 2, which is negative 11. That's pretty easy. And over here we have 0 minus, and let's work with this fraction a little bit. Okay, 22 squared. I'm going to use a calculator for that. 22 squared is equal to 484. So my numerator here is going to be 484. My denominator, 4 times 1, is going to be 4. So I'm going to have negative 11, comma, and then I have to do my division here. 484 divided by 4 is 121. 
So I have 0 minus 121, and now I can do my subtraction, and I'll get negative 11 comma negative 121. Okay, with that we've now found our vertex. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and keep track of the things we've learned so far. We found that there are two x-intercepts here and here, one y-intercept here, and one vertex here. All of these points are going to be helpful as we move on to the next part of this problem, part C, where we create the graph. And we're going to do that in our next video.